Microtech, we guarantee a certain quality for our products. When you receive a brand new router, a switch or another type of product, you know that when you plug it in, it will just work. When something is not right, it is usually just a configuration issue that can be easily resolved. However, if something were to be seriously wrong with your device, of course, you have the option to return or replace your device. But before you jump to conclusions and proceed with RMA, there are several things you should try beforehand. When you receive your item, the box should not be bent or damaged. If it is, there might have been some issue when delivering the product and it could have been damaged. In that case, try contacting the shipping company to resolve the issue. If there is nothing wrong with the packaging, but you plug it in and it doesn't seem to be doing anything, then first check the power supply. Especially be careful with PoE injectors as plugging them in the wrong way around could damage your equipment or if the cable is not properly fixated in this socket, it might be losing contact and hence failing to power your device. On most products, you will see power LED come on and at least one other LED will start blinking as the device is booting up. If you suspect the boot process is failing or not happening as it should, you want to first try loading the backup bootloader by holding the reset button as you power on the device. Holding the button for 2-3 seconds should activate the backup. If something had gone wrong with the bootloader, you should then proceed with an upgrade from the system router board section. The reset button can also help in other situations. If you hold it a little longer, one of the LEDs will start flashing and the device configuration will be reset. Or if you keep holding the button even longer, usually until the LED goes off, net install mode will be initiated. Net install is a small program that we use to do a completely fresh installation of the routerize from your computer. That process requires you to manually download the routerize installation package and you will need to use an Ethernet cable to connect your device to your computer. Net install can save your day not only when you have messed up with your configuration, but also when the operating system itself has been damaged. For example, if you lost power during an upgrade and it won't boot now. If you are unable to initiate net install, check with your product information to make sure you are using the correct port and holding the correct button for the right amount of time. If that doesn't help, your computer might have an issue sending or receiving data in this matter. It could be a firewall issue or another service might be using the port necessary for this process or in some rare cases of hardware incompatibility, placing a switch between your device and the computer might help. If your device seems to be working but you are unable to connect to it, make sure you are using the correct port to access your device. The default configuration will often have a reserved WAN port that is firewall protected from inputs. Some of our devices also have separate RJ45 console ports that will not work if you just plug an Ethernet cable into them. But if you have a device that can use serial over RJ45, you have a great alternative for accessing your device when things go wrong. Connection issues can also be caused by faulty wires and any equipment that is in between you and your devices such as PoE injectors. If the electrical connections are not reliable, then you will also experience issues with Ethernet linking, such as frequent ups and downs. Also make sure the ports at both ends are not damaged. A common cause for dead Ethernet ports is simply careless use of PoE injectors. Injecting power into an Ethernet port that does not support PoE is not a good idea. Connection problems with cage type ports like SFP and QSFP could be caused by incompatibility. Some interfaces might be compatible with one Microtech device, but not with another one. SFP modules could also fail if you have used the wrong type of optical cable. So make sure that you have the correct cable and the module is functioning as expected. Now let's move on to other issues that don't prevent you from accessing your device, but nonetheless can be annoying if not resolved. 
when one or multiple LEDs are not working as expected, first make sure you have not changed the LED settings in the system LEDs section as it is possible to turn them off altogether. Then make sure that you have upgraded to the latest Routerus version as software changes can sometimes impact LED behavior. Reboots are always annoying, but they are usually not caused by hardware defects. If your device is rebooting when under load, it could be an issue with the power supply, where it cannot provide high enough wattage. But in any case, make sure that you have upgraded to the latest stable Routerus version, and if reboots persist, it could be that they are caused by misconfiguration. Try resetting the device back to defaults or perform net install if you are suspicious that something has gone wrong with the operating system. Finally, let's cover mobile networking related issues. These can be particularly troublesome as the culprit might be external factors that you might not be able to influence such as your environment or the practices of your mobile operator. Starting with the SIM card, if it is not detected, make sure that it is the correct form factor and it has been well secured in the correct slot if there are multiple. A lot of times SIM card thickness can be an issue, especially as smaller form factors tend to be thinner, hence an adapter should also increase the thickness. Of course, also make sure that the SIM card has not been damaged and that you have a valid subscription. Now, if the SIM is detected, but you are still unable to connect or communicate, you want to make sure that you are also using the right APN for your network. The auto detect feature does not work correctly with all operators. This can be changed from the LTE section. Additionally, you have to make sure that your operator does not impose limitations on the type of devices that can be used and supports the bands that your device does. Different regions can have very different requirements. Next up, if your LTE interface is missing in RouteOS and you have an LTE kit version of a device, you want to check that you have a physical LTE interface card firmly inserted into the respective socket. If the modem is present, or it is not a kit version, but it should still have an LTE interface, you might want to reboot the device and give it a couple of minutes after boot up to check if the interface has appeared. If it is still not there, or there is some other issue with your LTE interface, you will need to contact support. When there is anything wrong with your device that is not due to your configuration and you cannot wrap your hand around it, contact Microtic support by emailing support at microtic.com. Our team will try and help you and you have really encountered a defect, you will get directed to RMA.